I think I'm going to fess up right away. I'm not much of a movie goer. As a matter of fact, you could probably count on one hand, mm -hmm, yeah, probably count on one hand the number of times that uh, I've been to the movie theater over the last decade. So hi and welcome to Catholic Moment. I think the last time that I was at the movie theater was how long ago in a galaxy far, far away to watch a movie that probably started with those very same lines. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was this very first Star Wars trilogy that got me started at looking at movies through a Catholic lens. You see, long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away, in my grade 9 religion class, our teacher, Father Yeg, had just written a book comparing the Star Wars movies to the Bible. And as much as there's a lot of Gnostic overtones in Star Wars, and with the need to have a knowledge of a force and there being a light side to the force and a dark side to the force, there's also a kernel of truth in there in the spiritual warfare, the spiritual battle that's going on, that's being waged over souls. Since then, I've taken that notion of watching movies with a Catholic lens uh, to pretty much every movie that I, I've seen in the, the, the decades since my grade 9 religion class. I've most recently done this with my own grade 9 class where we looked at the line in the, witch, in the wardrobe from the Narnia series and I asked them to look for parallels from the Bible in the story of Narnia. Now this is a little bit easier to do with, than with Star Wars because C.S. Lewis himself wrote the Narnia series with Christianity in mind. And I'm going to give a spoiler alert right now, but in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, this is no more evident than in the climactic scene when Aslan, a pure and innocent spirit, gives up his own life in place of the sinner Edmund. And in watching that scene of Aslan's death, uh, it's so very easy to make parallels with the crucifixion of our Lord and so easy to almost see what's going on in that scene to what happens biblically at the crucifixion. Another series that it's actually fairly easy to uh, draw biblical parallels with to see our Catholicism in uh, is Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Again, an epic series of books that was written with Catholicism, with Christianity in mind, that has recently graced the big screens. That being said, it's not just in the, the Hollywood classics or the literary classics that we can turn to during this time of forced isolation to help develop and form our faith uh, on the big screen. In the last few years, there's been a number of new sandal epics that have been released that explore the Christian faith from a number of different angles. One of my favorites and one of the very few films that have actually returned to the theaters to watch is Risen. And in Risen, we follow the story of a, a Roman centurion, a Roman officer, who's been employed by Pilate to find the body of the crucified Jesus of Nazareth so as to prove that this resurrection did not take place. And as the movie unfolds, as the story takes place, uh, it really is a story of this Roman's development of his relationship with the risen Christ. Another one that I'm hoping to watch during this time of quarantine is Paul the Apostle, which studies the life of St. Paul from his conversion on the road to Damascus through to his martyrdom and the, the influence that this great witness to Christ has had on the world today. Uh, another great biopic, if you want, of a saint that's come out in the last five to ten years is Restless Heart, which was based on the, the confessions of St. Augustine. And I think one of the reasons why Restless Heart uh, pulls up my own heart is I can see a little bit of my own adolescence uh, in misspent youth in the life of St. Augustine, followed by 
that return to the faith and that coming to know Christ and that conversion moment. As we approach Easter, uh, in a few weeks we'll enter into Holy Week uh, and something that we try to watch on Good Friday uh, in our family is Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ. Now again, for I think we all know that the Passion of the Christ really isn't necessarily family viewing, especially if you have younger children, because it really is quite realistic with regards to our Lord's Passion and His Crucifixion. But I always approach it with the notion of this is what my own sinfulness has done to our Lord. And I find it very, very moving. And I find I'm usually praying the Stations of the Cross while I watch that. And as much as there's been these, these great movies that have recently been produced during this time of forced quarantine, we should also turn back to the classics because they also have a story to tell. They also have uh, a role to play in our faith formation. Again, another Good Friday classic is the Ten Commandments, which we usually watch uh, every year on Good Friday as well. Or there's also Ben-Hur, and when it comes to biographies of saints, one of my all-time favorites is the Song of Bernadette, which t tackles the, the apparitions at Lourdes and, our, and Saint Bernadette's uh, growing relationship with Our, our Lady. So and there's also all of these classics that are, that are out there to help us grow in our faith during this time of Catholic quarantine. Uh, if you're looking for something for younger children, um, very blessed at this time that formed.org has offered a free 40-day subscription to all of their video resources online. And at formed.org, you'll find all kinds of great movies and, and very short uh, films and animated films for younger children, such as the Brother Francis series, uh, to help them grow and nurture their love of Christ uh, from a child's perspective. Now in this short time, it's impossible to talk about every Catholic movie that's out there or every film that's been made that, that can help us grow and deepen and nurture our faith. So I invite you, if I've missed a film that you think should be absolute viewing for this Catholic quarantine, I invite you to put the title and if possible a link in the comments below. And I think through this listing we can all have enough quality screen time to help us make our way through this time of quarantine. I'm Robert LeBlanc and this has been a Catholic moment.